selection. Yeah, you were the one who set apart that collection of books that you wanted to pick up. Okay, my, my boss told me about you. Yeah, he told me that he would be coming by to pick up your selection of books. And I did put them apart. I set them apart just for you. Okay, well, let's review um, just so that way we have it all correctly placed for you. So, first things first, we have a paperback version. War Commentaries of Caesar, a complete war diaries of one of the greatest generals of all time, Julius Caesar's first-hand account of his military campaigns and conquests. Here we go. Right here. Is this accurate to what you were looking for? Is this about right? We have, um, it's published by the New American Library, um, Soldier and Conqueror, right there. A brilliant general and audacious politician, Julius Caesar used the army as the chief instrument in his drive for power. Yeah, it's, it's very cliche, honestly. Um, it's like predictable when people use the army for their drive for power. The com commentaries are Caesar's war memoirs, his first hand, or as John Malkovich would say, his memoirs, um, his first hand account of the battles he waged across the face of the world. In this fresh, vital translation by Rex Warner, the eminent classical scholar, the commentaries, emerge as the timeless exploits of a gifted leader who is admired by his own soldiers, respected by his enemies, the daring conquests of a military genius who shaped the course of history. Whoa, that's impressive. Put that on a resume. Let's see if you get hired. Overqualified. Rex Warner, poet, novelist, and classical scholar. No one cares about him. So, does that sound about right? Okay, so, there you go. Next one, we have Astrology for the Millions by the legendary astrologer Grant Levi, author of Heaven Knows What, the book that shows you how to be your own personal astrologer as you cast your horoscope up to 20 years in the future. The Bible literally says not to look up to the heavens for your source of information. Literally says that. Literally. The three wise men used astrology to find Christ's birthplace. You're not supposed to use it, but it can be used. Like, it literally can be. But you shouldn't. But it exists as a be as a subject of knowledge. But don't let the knowledge get inside your head. The Indispensable Astrologer's Handbook is your key to the future. Did you know you can actually project and interpret your own personal horoscope up to 20 years into the future? Yeah. Astrology for the Millions is the only book that shows you how and proves its accuracy with examples from the lives of Hitler, Mussolini, Napoleon, Stalin, and FDR. Whoa. It's almost like even the Babylonians used it. By tracing the year-by-year -year movements of the planets, you can predict how and when crucial planets are most influential and time your actions to make your horoscope and planetary cycles work best for you. Very self-indulgent. So, this is an interesting depiction. Very. We have Capricorn right there, and then we have Aquarius. Oh, interesting, and then Cancer up here. Anyways, does this sound about right to you? You want me to burn this? You want me to burn this? Is that the reason you ordered it? That's crazy. I'll do it, don't worry. Okay, now, the next book selection we have. Very interesting choice, very lovely choice. Virgil and the Latin Poets. Now this book is actually Latin, which, I mean, there's like little translations here, little like ways of trying to tell what is actually going on. But I mean, quite uh, an ambitious undertaking. I would say. Oh, and hey, take a turn. And this is literally me. It's literally me. That's Atlas, and it's literally me. It literally is. Oh. Let me enjoy your book real quick, and then I'll give it over to you, and then you can more properly enjoy your book. <gasps> found a little ticket. 
golden ticket. Star Theater in Little Port, New York. I have no idea what it is. The management reserves the right to revoke the license granted by this ticket by refunding the purchase price. after the female eunuch galvanized the women's liberation movement. <laughs> Stop liberating us! Too much freedom! Germaine Greer launches a fiery sequel assessing the state of womanhood and proclaiming that the time has come to get angry again. No, there's no, it's no, it's no. Please stop. Please stop. You're not solving any problems. You're making more of them. With passionate rhetoric, unique authority, and outrageous humor, the whole woman reveals how women have been sideswept and sidetracked in the quest for liberation, duped into setting for an Ezrat's equality. Duped? You, you were the one who helped it. Was I saying my inner monologue out loud? That's unfortunate. Ignore everything I just said. It, Greer argues that women have come a long way in the past three decades, but that innumerable forms of insidious discrimination and exploitation persist in every area of life, from the care of the body to the care of the household, from the workplace to the marketplace. You argued for us to go into the workplace. You did that. You did that. Household, how are the same? What did you even accomplish? She startles us with her demonstration that the oft-repeated claim that women can have it all is merely a pacifying illusion. You, you literally, you literally said it. You literally said it. That things are getting worse. No shit, Sherlock. And that action is necessary now. The whole woman is a shattering critique of the complacency and denial that have replaced feminist determination and militancy and of a society that has done little to maintain the momentum for change. It is also a call to arms, forceful and impossible to ignore. Let's ignore it. Interesting, interesting literature. Does this sound about right? This sounds about right. I'll leave it with you. Here, keep it. Take it. Next, we have an interesting selection by Eugene Father Seraphim Rose. It's called Nihilism, the Root of the Revolution of the Modern Age. Does this sound about right? I'll read the back. What does nihilism mean, wrote Friedrich Nietzsche, that the, uh, yet another writer who maybe should have just kept his thoughts to himself. Shh. No more speaking. That's what God told Christopher Hitchens. Shh. No more speaking. That the highest values are losing their value. There is no goal. There is no truth. No thing in itself. There is no answer to the question why. In 1962, the young Eugene Rose undertook to write a monumental chronicle of the abandonment of truth in the modern age. <laughs> Of the hundreds of pages of material he compiled for this work, only the present essay on nihilism has come down to us in completed form. Here, Eugene reveals the core of all modern thought in life, the belief that all truth is relative, <laughs> and shows how this belief has been translated into action in our era. Today, nearly half a century after he wrote it, this essay is more timely than ever. It clearly explains why contemporary ideas, values, and attitudes, the spirit of the age, are shifting so rapidly in the direction of moral anarchy as the philosophy of nihilism enters more deeply into the fiber of society. Nietzsche was right when he predicted that the 20th century would usher in the triumph of nihilism. Some years after writing this essay, Eugene Rose became a monk in the mountains of Northern California with the name Father Seraphim, although he lived with his... <sighs> Although he lived his whole life in America, he has become, after his death, one of the most popular spiritual philosophical writers in Eastern Europe. Nice. Does that sound about right to you? Does that sound about right? It does. Excellent. 
we also have Die on Fortune, a book on psychic self-defense. Very interesting read. Does this sound about right to you? Does this, does this sight sound about right to you? After finding herself the subject of powerful psychic attack, Dion Fortune wrote this detailed instruction manual for safeguarding yourself against paranormal malevolence, but not without some trepidation, as she says in the preface. 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 It is hardly possible to give practical information on the methods of psychic defense without at the same time giving practical information on the methods of psychic attack. It is not without reason that initiates have always guarded their secret science behind closed doors. It may well be that the time has come from plain speaking. Fortune explores the elusive psychic element in mental illness and more importantly details the methods, motives, and physical aspects of psychic attack and how to overcome this energy. <gasps> This revised edition of this New Age classic includes an index and additional expl explanatory note for contemporary readers. Interesting. Does that sound about right to you? It does. Have you tried the Bible? Try it. Try it next. Try, try the power of Christ. It does compel. Finally, and most fittingly, my life in Christ of or moments of spiritual serenity and contemplation of reverent feeling of earnest self-amendment and of peace in god extracts from the diary of the most reverend john Ilyich sergif father john saint john of kronstadt excuse me one moment while i read in the back this work has been selected by scholars as being culturally important and is part of the knowledge base of civilization as we know it. This work was reproduced from the original artifact and remains as true to the original work as possible. Therefore, you will see the original copyright references, library stamps, as most of these works have been housed in our most important libraries around the world and other notations in the work. The work, This work in the, is in the public domain, as it should be. In the United States of America and possibly other nations within the United States, you may feel freely, you may freely copy and distribute this work as no entity, individual, or corporate has a copyright on the body of the work. As a reproductive reproduction of a historical artifact, this work may contain missing or blurred pages, poor pictures, errant marks, etc. To be expected, cannot. Beggars cannot be true losers, my lord. Scholars believe, and we concur, that this, this work is important enough to be preserved, reproduced, and made generally available to the public. We appreciate your support of the preservation process, and thank you for being an important part of keeping this knowledge alive and relevant. Does that sound about right to you? Excellent. Well, in that case, it seems that you've already paid beforehand, so it doesn't seem like you have anything to owe the bookshop. So, in that case, um, yeah, can I help you with anything else? No? Okay. Well, I hope you take care and enjoy your books then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.